As the traditional 3x3 Rubik's Cube becomes more and more refined, I started to wonder, how have we gotten here? Nowadays we have cubes with magnet adjustment systems, tensioning systems, maglev, magnet positioning systems, and much much more. So to answer our question, we have to start at the beginning. Three weeks ago, Judge Smith retired to her chambers with Exhibit A, Rubik's Cube. She hasn't been seen since. The original Rubik's brand line of Rubik's Cube featured a very simple design. It was very blocky and it used a screw to hold it together. As a result, these cubes popped a lot and they had like no corner cutting. Comparing the original Rubik's brand to today's cubes, it's absolute garbage. But hey, you know, it was a start. He has gilded his family from Vietnam. He first ordered the Rubik's in June 1981 and sold it within seven days of purchase in under two minutes. Uh, there was also another cube at the time that was highly sought after by speed cubers. The Hungarian Rubik's Studio cubes featured springs and exposable centers. The addition of springs let the cube be more flexible and just easier to use. Exposable screws and springs was also great because it allowed people to DIY their cubes, which at the time was a necessity if you wanted a decent cube. Not long after, Rubik's released a DIY cube that featured adjustable screws and springs as well. Now on to our first real speed cube. It was the summer of 2010 when the Diane Guhong V1 was first released. And I have to say, it came with an amazing feature. It was able to reverse corner cut. In fact, it was the first cube to ever be able to reverse corner cut. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> this was most likely due to its very interesting piece design. However, this cube was very prone to pop. Just one year after the release of the Diane Guhong V1, Diane released one of the most influential cubes of its time, the Diane Zanji. Expanding off of the anti-pop mechanism used in the Diane Lunhu, which by the way is the first anti-pop mechanism, it wasn't very good though. The Diane Zanji sported new and improved torpedoes. This along with the piece design eliminated a bunch of pops. The Diane Zanchi was the cube Felix Zendigs used to set his famous 3x3 world record of 5.66 seconds. This cube was loved by the speed cubing community, so much so it is the most modded cube to date. This cube did so well that Diane made multiple other versions. The 2017 and 2018 releases were mostly underwhelming, but releases like the Zanchi Pro M give the Zanchi a more modern take. Even though the original Zanchi may not be viable for speed cubing anymore, the Zanchi line is still alive and well. Now on to what has to be the best line of speed cubes ever. Known by many, many names, the Moyu Weilong line has to be the best line of cubes ever. The first cube of this line, the Moyu Weilong, was responsible for ending the Diane Zanchi's reign. Released in 2013, many cubers preferred this cube over the Zanchi. Next came the Moyu Weilong V2, which made small changes to the original, one of which allowed for the cube to be stickerless. And in 2016, the Moyu Weilong GTS was released. This cube was very speedy and it had great corner cut, which led it to be the perfect subject for Trish Tran's experiments. So basically, the cube was uncontrollable and Trish Tran wanted to fix that. Enter magnets. Made by Trish Tran, the first magnetic cube was made and sold on the cubicle. The Weilong GTSM was an instant success, resulting to the cubicle magnetizing more and more speed cubes. Magnets are considered necessary in every speed cube nowadays, 
and many new innovations are focused around magnetic positioning systems. The GAN 356 Air UM is the first factory magnetized speed cube. Released in January 2017, the Air UM was popular for its magnetic positioning system and GES nut system. These nuts allowed for more customizability which allowed the cube to fit more cubers preferences. Another great cube at the time was released by Chi in collaboration with speedcuber Mats Valk. The Valk was very popular with many speedcubers at the time. It was used by Matt's Valk to get the former world record of 4.74 seconds. Yeah. Now we are about to enter what I like to call the modern age of speed cubing. New speed cubes would start to build off of GAN's GES nut system to make cubes with large amounts of customizability. This includes the introduction of magnetic adjustment systems and tensioning systems. The GAN 356XS featured a tensioning system and magnetic adjustment system. This allowed for cubers to adjust the cube to fit their personal preferences. The adjustment systems were only convenient, but they were also very easy to use. The XS made changes to the adjustment systems in the X, which allowed the XS to be easier and faster to adjust. GAN's next release, the 11M Pro, sported a new magnetic positioning system. Using corner-to-core -core magnets, GAN made a cube that can self-align itself. These corner-to-core -core magnets helped the stability of the cube tremendously and made it harder to overturn and underturn. Many top speed cubers used this cube and it was used by Timon to set the former world record 3x3 average of 5.09 seconds. The corner-to-core -core magnets in the 11 and Pro were taken to the next level in GAN's most recent release, the GAN 12 and Maglev. They were so strong that the cube would begin to align itself around the 45 degree mark. On top of that, this cube also featured Maglev. Maglev uses two magnets to simulate a spring. Maglev creates less friction in the cube which makes the cube smoother and faster. The Tornado V2 doesn't necessarily add anything new to the cubing market, but instead perfects tensioning systems. The spring and access adjustment systems are very easy to use and allow for a wide range of settings. This, along with its amazing feel and good performance, is why many cubers love this cube, including me. It's my personal favorite. The most recent release in the Moyu's Waylong line is the WRM Maglev. As the name suggests, this cube uses Maglev instead of springs. It also has Moyu's tensioning system that allows for a bunch of different settings. Also, it's purple. <laughs> Beautiful. So in conclusion, 3x3 speed cubes have gotten incredibly good over the years. The speed cubing tech that we know and love today has been slowly developed with every new release. Now, in 2022, the 3x3 is near perfect. So then another question arises. What's next? 